for the longest time, for like five, four years out of my competing career, I was always thought I was leg dominant. And I, I mean, I still am, but at least it's a little better. I have a little more balance. But what changed from my upper body training, specifically my chest and my back, is finding movements that work for me. A lot of people do lap pull downs and um, barbell presses and stuff that's basic and common. I don't do those because I did them for years and it never worked. So I found things that worked for me, which were machine presses, dumbbell presses, a lot more. I was trying to find a connection to my, the muscle I'm training in the movement and then getting strong at that. And then over time, obviously it doesn't take, it's not that quick, but over time, they just kept getting better and better and better. I can tell you my exercises and, and movements and hasn't changed in three years. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. I know what I'm doing on Wednesday. I'm doing, like, I just know, because I've been doing the same thing for like years. I get why people get bored, but I don't get bored. So I, I keep getting better at it. Hey guys, welcome. This is a uh, brick house gym. This is my gym. Uh, this is where I train for most of my classes prep. Well, at least for a year now. Um, we're in Denton, so it's a bit far away from Dallas, about 40 minutes. But uh, it's still Dallas, just called Little D. Um, today we're training a push day, so it's mostly going to be chest, shoulders, and triceps a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys a little tips of what I do for my entire prep uh, to get two wins. It's important, two wins. And I got a chest training tip for you. I feel like I can be the one to tell you this because I started having no chest and I have somewhat of a good chest. So I guess I'm the right person to let you know. Um, I see a lot of people whenever they press, there's a lot of tension being placed on your shoulders and your triceps rather than your chest. The reason being you're thinking I'm pressing the weight. I'm just moving the weight and I'm not really using my chest. Watch, I can literally move my arms by flexing my chest. This and it goes, this and it goes. Same principle, no matter how heavy the weight gets, a lot more control from the top, get a negative right, and then you squeeze it back up. Key point, take your traps back and try to push away from the weight. And you notice your chest get a little bit of contraction with it. Just a little tip. I feel a lot more pressure on my chest. If anything, where I can have a control on the negative and be able to squeeze through all the way with the whole pressures on my chest, to me, that's a good piece. And one of the first things I found here was this and then the Nautilus high row with this. And I just knew I was gonna train here for the rest, for as long as I could. fear in his entire bodybuilding thing and training. I love training. If there's no bodybuilding, I'll keep training. If there's no stage, I mean, I'll keep training. But my biggest fear is tearing the pet. Why? Because my first day in the gym ever, I was 18 years old, TWU gym. My college gym at that point. I saw my first ever pet tear, first day in the gym. So that traumatized me. <laughs> so I had to learn ways to not put that much pressure on my pec. If you ever notice, most people that tear the pec, it's always on a flat bench of some sort. Usually barbells. So I have never touched a barbell bench press. If you watch some of my videos, you notice that. I don't touch a barbell. I'm scared of it. There's a reason. <laughs> Thank you. 
like you win the show and everyone's like congratulations and shaking your hand but you never get that opportunity to like relax and go and like relax on what you just did it's almost like this next thing is coming up what i need to do what i need to get better at what i need to improve and the next day the gym is just motivated to keep going and you don't ever my fiance gets mad at that for me like she was upset because after the show we're like let's go out and eat i'm like yeah what do you think about this for an off-season plan like like you know like i'm already just like just like eat bro <laughs> like i'm like yeah cool but <laughs> it's a, it's it's not that it like i don't care about what i've done it's just more i just want to be better if that makes sense this thing a lot again I'm not that old I'm 28 I got my protocol to like 22 I was lucky enough to have to look up to like older people like the branch horns and like he would have been doing this way before social media like all I know like nowadays a lot of people come in they put the fame before the work it's almost like I want to be a social media fit I get it a lot of people make money on social media but if you're trying to do it in the bodybuilding sense, like if you want to focus on social media, go ahead, it doesn't really care. But I'm talking about bodybuilding itself, like competitive bodybuilding. They put the, the social media fame, trying to be the Nick Walker on social media before being the Nick Walker on stage. You're like that took years of work before the Nick Walker you know. Like, I don't know, like now everyone's like, oh dang, you won this amount of shows. Like, that's cool, but I've been training for this thing since I was 18. That's like 10 years ago. Like, I don't know. People just put the, the, the fame before the thing. Like, I'm not trying to say it's a bad thing, but there's sometimes you walk in the gym and there's these kids with like, I call them kids. They're not really kids at my age. <laughs> with like the fanciest cameras of all time. And then you're like, they have to be somebody because there's no way. Like those cameras are like 2000 plus or something. And then they take those fancy videos and then the entire time it's not about them training. It's about them training for the camera. It's like trying to, hey, let's do that clip again. Let's do that clip again. It's like, you're not gonna get there if that's what you keep doing every day. I don't know. Maybe I'm old. <laughs> it sounds bro science but it makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anyone else. But I think of things as, a stretch and a squeeze portion of it. So I never start my movement with any exercise that's like a fly first before a press. Cause I just feel like I need to put as much blood as I can in it and then stretch it out. It makes sense to me. I do the same thing for RDL. I'll do a hamstring curl before an RDL or a row before a pull down of some sort. It's just me. So I like to do my shoulder laterals on the cable. It's, I do dumbbells sometimes or machines sometimes, but primarily I do on the cables. Now, I notice a lot of people do their laterals in this plane. They like to come right up to the side because it's side laterals. But here's the problem, anatomy of the shoulders. Here's your laterals, here's your front delt, there's your rear, right? If I come in this direction, what else moves? My traps. It takes away some of the weight. So they're stabilizers, they're gonna move, but you don't want them taking the majority of the weight from you. So if I come up from this side here, instantly my traps are gonna, that's just how it is. It's just, you can't control it. So the way to make that all shoulders as best as you can and have your traps just be a stabilizer is actually instead of moving in this plane, to move in this plane. So watch the difference here, here, it's all dealt. I mean, I may not have the biggest delt, but that's how I got mine. So um, having the cables or the dumbbells or the machine and having yourself set up in the position 
where you can move directly in this pack. You're golden. Like, for the longest time, I'll go Brion one. Brion one based on how much muscle he has and how much conditioning he got. But when we're talking about classic shapes, there are certain shapes that are just classic, you know? So, the reason I was extremely happy when Terrence won, oh got second, I'm sorry, and then won like two Arnolds, was they finally gave someone that was short, like, like props. Because basically, he is 5'5", 172, 176, 167 the last Arnold, like that he said. Like, I always assumed classic was a tall man's game. Like, the taller you are, the more weight you have. The shorter you have, the like, shorter you are, the less weight you actually have. So, I felt like once they gave, gave Terrence that, that props, I felt good, because it's like, I have a shot, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, he's the guy I'm like, I can never be bumped He's six foot tall, there's no way I can compare. But I compare myself to Terrence, because we're closer in height and shape and things he has, his bells and whistles, is basically what I'm trying to get, so. That's basically what I, what I, what I like about the new, the new direction for classic. That makes sense. If, if you think about it, like the top five, the, the top five guys, he's the only one under five. Because Alex is 5'10", and he's, well, he's not even top 10. Yeah. And then Ramon's almost six foot. Uh, Urs is almost six foot. Chris is six foot one. That's the only, 100% yes. Because while I'm training chess, no matter how controlled and isolated you are with your chest movement, there is some level of shoulders as well as triceps in them. So I do get them pumped before I actually focus on training them. They get a little bit of work as well. So I just have a whole day where I just train them all together. My problem with it though, with the young people coming up, yeah. is they always make comments like, oh, I could be at the Olympia in a year or two. And it's like, I'm trying to explain it. Have you, have you seen Bumstead in person? Like these are big people. <laughs> I wish I could just train for a year and be ready to get on the Olympia stage. I mean, it's good to have the goal, but, They're big. Like, Terrence is like 5'5", five five, but he weighs 205 right now. Like, now he has to make weight at 180, but, like, I have to make weight at 192, but I'm never 192 on stage. I'm like, closer to 200, because I got to eat back up. And then, in the off season, everyone's like, oh, you're bigger than you actually look. I'm like, yeah, because I'm 225. <laughs> it's like, I might be 5'8 and have to make 190, you still kind of have to grow and it takes time. <laughs>